How's it going everyone? Today we're going to talk about sifting and whether it does actually help to make your bread lighter. And as you've already seen in the video title, no, it doesn't make your bread lighter. But I'm not just going to say it, I'm going to show you a practical example. So we're going to sift some flour, we're going to make some dough. This will be a regular bread dough made with flour, yeast, salt and water. So let's sift this flour, let's make it as nice and fluffy as it can be. Let's remove all the lumps. And you could be forgiven for thinking that this would make your bread lighter, because it looks pretty light. But let's continue on with the recipe. Let's add the yeast, the salt, and then continue with the water. I could have actually sifted in the yeast and the salt together with the flour. That would have made it even better. But as you'll see in a moment, it wouldn't have made a difference. So let's give this a quick stir to distribute the ingredients evenly. As you can see, the flour is still nice and light. Now let's add the final ingredient, the water. And now we can start turning this into a dough. And what do you know, from being nice and light, it's turned into a stiff lump. So earlier on, I was sifting the flour to get rid of any lumps. Well now there's one massive lump. But the moment's still a bit loose. So let's go to knead it, because this dough is not ready yet. Let's see what happens after about 5 minutes. Let's see how it changes. But you know, it's obvious what's gonna happen. The dough is just gonna be even more of a lump than it was before. So obviously, sifting flour made no difference to this. So it's totally pointless sifting your flour, if you want your bread to be nice and light. Proper fermentation and perhaps the addition of some fat will do that. But with that out of the way, let's move on to some examples where you might actually want to sift your flour for bread making. This is whole wheat flour, and it contains a lot of bran, which is the outside of the wheat berry. And if your flour is extra chunky, maybe you want to remove some of that bran. I've never run into that situation, but let's just give it a try. Let's sift this through and see what happens. Flour is actually separated this way by sifting. White flour is the finest, so it falls through the finest sieve. And whole wheat flour is coarser, so it stays at the top of the sieves. And there you have it, we have separated some of the bran. People used to sift their flour back in the day because it used to contain a lot of impurities. And if your flour has been sitting in a cupboard for years, it might be infested with some creepy crawlies, so you might want to sift that. So if you want to sift flour for bread making, you should only do it to remove unwanted stuff from it. That's pretty much the only reason to do it. But let's move on to the next example. This is when you absolutely must sift your flour, in order to get a nice and light bake. But this ain't no bread, we're gonna make a cake. And yes, I've included the recipe down below. This is Genoa's sponge. It is super light, contains very little flour. So here's the process. You whisk the sugar and eggs, or a boiling pot of water, also known as bain-marie. Make sure the water is not touching the bottom, and bring the mixture up to about 40 degrees Celsius, which is 104 Fahrenheit. Keep whisking until it reaches that temperature, and take it off the heat, and we're gonna continue whisking. This mix must become super light and fluffy before we add anything to it. And I wouldn't suggest doing this by hand, but if you don't have a mixer, well I guess you don't have a choice. After taking the mix off the heat, we want to whisk it vigorously for around 8 minutes until it cools down completely and almost quadruples in volume. Look how nice and fluffy it is, these eggs are full of air. And this is the base of this sponge, it's basically a massive omelette. But when your forearms are nice and sore and your eggs are puffy, Let's continue with the rest of the ingredients. I'm going to give it some lemon zest for extra flavor. From this point on, we need to be super delicate. We need to keep as much air in the egg as possible. And there's a good reason to sift your flour. And if your flour is going to be mixed with everything else, like the pinch of salt that I'm adding, also put that through the sieve. This is when you really want to get rid of lumps. Because we want to agitate the mix as little as possible. Having lumps in the flour would make us stir the mix for longer, thus knocking the air out of it. And that would just result in a dense sponge. So to keep this nice and light, use a rubber spatula and stir it gently, going around in a circle and turning the bowl. We need to do this slowly and gradually, until all the flour is absorbed. It will take around a minute, so don't rush it. Of course the egg mix will lose some of its volume, but don't worry about that too much. Now let's add the butter, that's the final ingredient and mix that through as well. So you can see how delicately we are handling this, unlike the bread dough that we just smashed together against the table. This thing will be super light, I mean the bread dough would be light as well, but for different reasons. Now pour the batter in a non-stick paper lined baking tin. And again, be gentle, do it slowly. 
Make sure your oven is preheated for at least 40 minutes before you bake this. 170 degrees Celsius, which is 340 Fahrenheit, with a fan off. And we'll bake this for around 30 minutes. Do not open the oven halfway through because this will collapse. You can check it after about 25 minutes. Press your finger in the sponge. If it springs back, it's more or less ready. If the indentation stays, well, it needs longer. Of course, the surface color should be nicely golden brown as well. Now let this cool down for 30 minutes in the tin. And before removing it, I poked it with a skewer. Now I'm gonna brush it with some syrup, which is made up of sugar, lemon juice, and a bit of water. Let the cake soak up the syrup for around five minutes before removing it from the tin. And I know this is a bread channel, but this cake is awesome. And if you go mixer at home and you don't have to beat the eggs by hand, you should definitely try this. Now we need to let this cool down completely. It'll take around two more hours. And I left the paper on the bottom so it doesn't stick to the rack. So go and watch some of my videos while you're waiting for your cake to cool down. And when it's nice and chill, we can continue by assembling it. Start by cutting it in half. Use a sharp serrated knife. When you cut your cake, go in a sawing motion, back and forth, back and forth. Don't just press it sideways, otherwise you squish your sponge. Take your time, do it gradually, there's no rush. Now let's have a look on the inside. This thing is seriously light. We've got a nice uniform crumb. Look at that texture. This is what you call a sponge. I'm gonna put this aside and whip up a filling, which is pretty simple. It's just cream, sugar, and lemon zest. Of course, you can fill your sponge with whatever you like, but I think a nice light sponge goes well with a nice light filling. Now whip this until it's nice and stiff. So let's move on. Get the bottom part of the sponge and slap that cream on there. At first place it in the middle of the sponge and then spread it out. This is an easy way to get a nice even layer. And don't go over the edge because when we put the second sponge on top, it will squish the cream out a little bit anyway. I'm gonna to top this with some strawberry jam. This is kind of becoming a Victoria sponge cake, but with better texture, of course. But you could use any jam you like. I'm pretty sure that this kind of cake would go well with every jam. Now let's seal it up. Let's place the top layer on, nice and straight. Make sure to handle it gently because it is a bit delicate. You should always use the palms of your hands or the flat parts of your fingers when handling sponge like this to prevent it from breaking up. And make sure you press it into the filling properly. Now let's wipe any excess cream off the edge and we are almost ready to serve this up. I really do hope some of you will try this recipe. I know we started off talking about why sifting flour for making bread lighter is pointless, but this has really turned into something super delicious. I could have easily made a separate video out of this. Now don't forget the generous dusting of icing sugar. This is something you should definitely sift. Now get a plate and tuck in. Now we can have a look at the cross section. And I can show you the texture close up. I mean only I can feel how light it is. But let me bring this closer and run my fork through it so you can see how soft it is actually. It's absolutely effortless. But it's definitely not crumbly. It's exactly how a proper sponge should be. Nice and moist and really soft. And you could easily eat half this cake without even realizing it. So there you have it. An actually good reason to sift your flour to make something lighter. What do you think of this recipe? What do you think of the video? Have you ever sifted your flour in hopes that it will make your bread dough lighter? Let me know down in comments. Because I get where you're coming from. I have been taught the same thing in the past. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.